Well, while that's happening, uh, the gang, Rutherford, Mariner, Tandy, and Boimler, are eating in the mess slash ten forward. I'm going to call it seven forward from now on. I won't remember that. Why seven? I don't know. I just feel like it's a smaller ship. So it would be on a lower level. I don't know. And they find out they're all, they've all been signed up for anomaly consolidation duty, ACD, uh, which basically Mariner describes as trash day. It's essentially everything that people bring back from missions that is sort of like too dangerous to simply throw away or, or like to replicate away. Uh, they have to go around and collect weird artifacts and things like that. Uh, Mariner hates it. Rutherford describes it as dangerous science trash. But Tandy thinks it's going to be super fun. She's very excited about it. Boimler is excited to do whatever because it's Boimler. Then he has a big pratfall as he's getting up from the table and spills everything on his tray all over himself. And everyone laughs. They have a great time. As Boimler is walking away to put his stuff away, he is uh, he's sort of like, hey, Boimler, over to a table uh, with a bunch of people in the command track. Uh, namely, their, their ringleader is this person named Ensign Casey. And they want to invite him to a club called the Red Shirts. Oh, my dear. And they basically, what they do is they help each other get promotions. And, you know, they're just like all trying to help each other be, it's like a weird frat, like a weird, awful frat. And they say there's an acting captain's duty up for grabs later that day that only the Red Shirts know about. And they can pull some strings and help when we do it. But he's got to do ACD. And they say, no, no worries. We can get you out of that. And they want Boimler to be able to carry himself like a leader. So Boimler, ever the follower until it really counts. Basically, it goes and follows. Uh, meanwhile, Ransom and Kayshan are the ones who are talking with the prisoner, Rumdar, who wants uh, asylum. And Rumdar's like, I want to see your defensive shields and your defensive schematics and how your force field works. And then Kayshan pulls Ransom aside and is like, you think this guy is trying to uh, be a spy, basically? And they're like, yeah, he's taking photos with his wrists. They call down to Freeman and say, like, I think this, this guy asking for... for uh, asylum is, is probably just a spy. She says, you know what? See if you can get information out of him while you keep him talking. So they they try to do that. Meanwhile, uh, ACD, Anomaly Consolidation Duty, is happening. Uh, Tendi and Mariner and Rutherford are moving around. They go to Ransom's room. They find some unlabeled crystals. They find a big frog skull, which Rutherford drops and then inhales, and he begins to swell, make these wrist paste and put them back together. Boyne was hanging out with the red shirts, and they're basically asking him, really ridiculous questions like uh, how often does Riker clean his trombone? And they walk past the room where Mariner, Tendi, and Rutherford are, and Rutherford has just vomited all over himself after having swelled to enormous proportions and then swelled, unswelled back down. Uh, Ransom and Kayshawn are showing Rumdar the quote-unquote gift shop. But Rumdar really wants to see the warp core, and Ransom's like, this guy's not that bright. And they sort of start gloating over the fact that they're going to be able to fool him and then when they turn back around, he's gone. Rumdar, the spy, is gone. And they have no trace of him, so they run to search. And then we get a nice little montage of some more anomaly consolidation duty. It's not good. It's basically them entering rooms, picking up things, having horrible effects happen to them. Like every, like what would be a full episode of Star Trek happens to them in like a second. Uh, and they have, you know, the hypo spray. So it's actually, I thought it was very amusing that uh, these... Yeah, any one of those things would be the cold open for, like, a TNG episode. It would be like, oh, look at this frog skull. Drop, sniff, everyone goes crazy. That's the whole episode. And the doctor has to figure out a potion. Or, you know, a potion. Oh, my God. Meanwhile, on the Packlet planet, Freeman, Captain Freeman's like, well, then, listen, I need to speak to someone in charge. They want to speak to uh, the queen. The queen comes out. She has a much bigger helmet. Queen wants to speak to Rumdar to make sure that they haven't killed the prisoner. But... As we just said, Ransom and Kayshawn have lost track of Rumdar, so Freeman says he's in the bathroom, but that they should negotiate a ceasefire. And the Queen says she doesn't have the helmet big enough to negotiate that. Womp, womp, womp. Red shirts are helping Bormler put, become more captain y. So they help him with his posture and they modify his uniform and he gets like, looks like calf implants or something. And they change his hair, give him a different haircut. They basically give Bormler a makeover, he, a serious glow up for Boimler and he runs into his group of friends and Tendi's pretty like excited about how good he looks but Mariner is not feeling the whole ACD work and Mariner is getting upset at Tendi for looking at the bright side meanwhile Boimler gets more lessons in like how to give a rousing speech to be a real captain you know 
Uh, he has to picture himself like Riker on the bridge, and he gives a speech. And everyone in the red shirts applauds, and it's great. Uh, there, the I guess the sort of like final ACD thing is they go to Doctor Miglamo's room, and Tendy's upset that Mariner and Rutherford have been complaining, so she's like, "I'll do it myself." And she's in there doing it herself, and she opens up a storybook and rampaging energy-based pigs enter the room and then a big slug swallows tendy and then she comes out of its butt uh and then tendy's like you know what this does suck uh down on the packlet planet uh freeman and shacks have been surrounded the packlet king shows up he's got a bigger helmet then the emperor of the packlet shows up he's got a bigger helmet and then rebels storm the palace and they kill the emperor and they kill the king and maybe the queen too and the rebel becomes the new leader when he puts the thing on uh, basically, things are going terribly. And the red shirts back on the ship are walking through the hall, and they're telling Boimler, basically, like, you look good, you sound good, but here's the thing. You need to act the part of command staff. You need to get rid of your, your stupid friends. You always end up, quote, hell, elbow deep in some kind of slime. And Boimler, what does Boimler say? It could be for quotable moments, but I still think he said, this is, this is Starfleet. This is Starfleet. There's always slime. That's what that's what we do. <laughs> Something like that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So back to the ACD. Tendy's holding this cube that's like affecting her mood, and she's mad about how it didn't work out. And she tells him that she's the one that actually volunteered them all for ACD because she thought they would do something cool and fun and see some cool stuff together. And the cube makes her eye go light. Anyway, she turns into a giant green scorpion, and she attacks Mariner and Rutherford, and then she starts attacking the whole ship, and she runs into Seven forward. And starts attacking people there, and everything's going completely insane. The red shirts see this, and they're like, "We're going to step up and do something about this." And so they each step forward and start giving speeches at the same time, because that's all they know how to do is give inspiring speeches. Boimler steps up. He finds out about the cube. He realizes it's an ataxian mood shifter. So he goes to the replicator, gets some hot beans, spills that on himself. That makes the scorpion laugh. He gets some birthday cake with lit candles. He falls while he's holding that. That makes the scorpion laugh. He basically lights himself on fire. And then finally just shoots like a stream of food out uh, of the replicator at himself, which allows Tendi to drop her scorpion form. And he covers himself in slime and saves the day. Uh, The red shirts see this and they basically like grimace and walk away. Meanwhile, Ransom and Kayshan have found Rumdar wily thing that he is he sent himself out of a space an airlock so he's frozen in space dr chiana is able to bring him back because pack lids are apparently super strong and able to deal with that and then he immediately asks for all their codes which ransom and case are just like we're just sending him back to the planet you're obviously a spy captain and shacks are surrounded on the planet when rumdar returns and then all the pack lids laugh ha 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 you thought rumdar was a prisoner but he was a spy and now he knows everything about you including how awesome your bathrooms are. Oh, yes, because the reason Rumdar was in space is that he thought he was going to the bathroom in an airlock and then pressed the flush button and flushed himself out into space. Uh, And he says, we fooled you. You're so dumb, Captain Freeman. And Captain Freeman is able to use reverse psychology on this spy and say, oh, gosh, um, I wish we knew what secrets you didn't tell us because you're such a good spy. And he goes, we didn't tell you anything about our plan to to smuggle a bomb onto Earth. Ha, 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 ha. And then uh, Freeman and Jax are like, great, we're out of here. <laughs> and the backwoods uh, are still super happy about it. Oh, yeah. they For a second, they realize that her name is Captain Freeman. But then at the end of that scene, they go back to saying she's Jane White. <laughs> anyway, uh, the rest is kind of a wrap up. Tendy and Rar- Rutherford and Mariner make up. They all apologize. The red shirts run into Boimler and they're like, you can't come to the acting captain's thing. Uh, and Boimler was like, you know what? All you do is imitate other captains. I don't want to be like you. We got to do work. That's what Lower Decks is about. And then uh, all the other uh, ensigns, except for uh, what's his tush? I knew I was going to say ensign. Ensign Casey? Ensign Casey. Thank you. I thought I'd written names everywhere, but you know, got to get a what's his tush in there. Am I right? Of course. They're all like, you know what? Maybe we'll just focus on being better Starfleet officers and not acting like captains. And Casey gets to do the, promi- the, 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 not a promotion. It's like a position to be acting captain for a while if it should happen. Uh, and he's super happy about that. But Ransom, who grants it to him, really doesn't care. And he walks past him and says to Boimler, hey, you showed great leadership out there saving us and saving the ship. Freeman shows up. She takes the bridge crew back for a drink, which actually does leave Ensign Casey in charge of the bridge. So he gets up and he sits in the captain's chair and he feels really great for about four seconds. And then there's a shift change. 
and he's told to go clean up the airlock that the pack led used the bathroom in. Uh, that's definitely from my quotable moments. And at the end, the epilogue was really out. I, th- <laughs> I thought it was the end of the episode was just going to be like, oh, happy days. But instead, they find like some sort of communication device and they decide to <laughs> Greg call the like oh, yeah. Armis. It's like the sad, the puddle of, of sad death. Yeah, pu- puddle of evil or whatever. Puddle of oil, the sort of humanoid in the one oil that killed uh, Tasha. Tasha, Yasha, Tasha Yar. Tasha, Tasha, Tasha Tar. Uh, and they basically crank Gollum and he's like, I will kill you when I find you. And they all laugh and it's fantastic. So they've, they, that's what they do for kicks. And here endeth episode six of season two, Lower Decks, A Spy Among Us. Yeah, it was good times. It was a good one. I very much like this episode. It had a lot of, I can, I can only assume it had a lot of Easter eggs. Well, you would think. I was expecting Easter eggs within the ACD segment of, oh, here's this crap that came from like some episode. And there weren't any. Yeah. Not that I spotted. Oh, yeah. they all, It was all sort of like references to things that might happen. Yes, exactly. Crystals and skulls yeah. and books that come to life was there some was there not a plot of like tng that was like people's imaginary folk yeah what was the thing with rumple stillskin shows up and stuff like that on tng i'm pretty sure that was tng maybe that was d space nine where like folk stories that you knew from your childhood were coming true i think it was actually was d space nine because o'brien was imagining rumple stillskin and Rump Stillskin was there. It was very special. That sounds about right. Anyway, should we move on to... <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, it's me once again, and we shall go immediately to Easter Egg Corner with our correspondent, our Easter Egg correspondent, Stevie Bass. Stevie, what have you got for us? Well, hi there, Aki. Hi there. How are you? Happy to be here, as always. And uh, so we had a couple of Easter eggs here down on the uh, series... Set... 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 The set of lower decks i want to say the set of, of set phasers and that was not correct um mm-hmm. the deck of set phasers. <laughs> the deck of set phasers oh dear um but mostly i mean the only easter egg i was really able to find and it was so obvious it wasn't even an easter egg but was armis and it was you know that call back to skin of evil right. and that crank call and when i watched um i do a little bit of digging but when i watched the little interview yeah. with mike mcmahon he uh said that when he was a kid and he watched skin of evil He's obviously about our age. Um, he said he was so scared yeah. of that episode that this for him was kind of co- like payback to get get back at Armas. I mean, yeah, that, that episode is terrifying. It's like the mm. first it's the first one where someone in the crew dies. Yep. So it's real consequences. And they like couldn't shoot it or talk to it or reason with it. Yep. You know, and Riker got pulled into it. Yeah, Riker got pulled in. I think the cap, the, um, the doctor was injured in the shuttle, right? Oh, no, Troy was in the shuttle. No, no, no. She came down and was able to reason. And she was trying to piss him off, which I think eventually worked. Yes, exactly. Anyway. Yes, indeed. But that was really my main Easter egg. Did you see any else? No, I didn't see any specific Easter eggs. I uh, I think obviously the secret plan to blow up Earth is going to be a huge part of the end of the season. But who knows? Mm -hmm. You know? They could resolve that yeah. in a week and go somewhere absolutely crazy. But it sounds like fun. It sounds like real, real fun things are in the offing. Yeah, I didn't see any other Easter eggs. No, I'm trying to think of like characters or whatever, but there wasn't anything, even, you know, in the, the mess hall. Nothing. Not that it was disappointed. Like, it was a great episode. And I think they are, in terms of the yeah. way that the story arc is going, we're starting to see mm-hmm. development from season one. It's not just the same. And like, yeah, it's changing. And like, right. so I'm fully appreciative and i don't mind that i have less to do in my little segment so aki 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 hey there, hey there aki it's uh, yeah yes it is. that's everything here from the deck of set phasers and uh, whatever i'm supposed to the set the deck of fuck that's everything here for easter eggs <laughs> back to you in the studio bye thank you very much for the deck of set phasers or the set of deck phasers <laughs> we bring you easter eggs every week as soon as we can find them now on to our next segment, Quotable Moments. Quotable Moments. That was queued up nicely. Normally there's a thing of, oh, fuck, where did that button go? Oh, yeah, you nailed it. Um, I have a couple. 
obviously I loved Hey Boimler, how often did Riker clean his trombone? And then when mm-hmm. when Boimler says all the time, it's like a thing that he does, uh Ensign Casey says, I need to learn to blow something brass. <laughs> so stupid. Yeah. Obviously this is a this isn't a friendship, it's a starship. Are you a star or not? Yes. That was classic. <laughs> And I thought there was one more in my list here. Maybe I didn't. Oh, uh, it's when uh, Boimler is uh, subjecting himself to all sorts of humiliation in order to stop Tendi from being a rampaging scorpion. When it starts to work, Rutherford uh, exclaims, it's working. Her emotional armor is weakening. I thought that was cute. (laughs) That was cute. I nearly stopped to write down all of the things that he asked the replicator for. But I, I didn't. Oh, God. I almost did that, too. I was like, okay, hot beans. And I was like, what? Birth? No, no, this is stupid. Uh, it's a lot of food. He just has Shaxx. It's a lot of stuff. There was one thing I think I liked at the beginning, and it was Shax, and he was talking to Freeman, and he was talking about um, how well she negotiated something. And, and he said, if you do Picard-level peace brokering like that, they might give you an enterprise. Yeah, that's great. The next enterprise. I'm quite like that. Uh, speaking of Shax, when he says to Ensign Casey when he's like, get out of my seat, when he is taking over the bridge, he says, go clean up. <laughs> he says, go clean up airlock 17. The pack led did something unspeakable in there. That's right. <laughs> yeah. I like that one. Yeah. Um, let's see. I had two more. Mm-hmm. I think one was the pack led and he goes, I am now pack led leader. Behold my giant helmet. Yes. And it's just stupid, but I liked it. So dumb. Yes. So dumb. And actually, now this is this isn't necessarily an Easter egg, but I thought this was and you can argue this either way, but Rutherford, when they were talking about Tendi and her being so excited and enthusiastic, he said, We should have fed off your enthusiasm, not try to tamp it down. And there is chatter about whether that was a comment from Mike McMahon as to some of the Star Trek forums where, you know, people people can be a bit negative about how other people feel about things. Um, ah. So I thought that was an interesting thought. Oh, yeah. I don't doubt that Mr. McMahon uh, put that in deliberately. Because mm. it does, yeah, it speaks to not only to the Star Trek credo, yeah. but also to the idea that, uh, yeah, people can be, listen, it's all love here at Set Phasers. But, yeah, sometimes people are very uh, very mean about other Star Treks because they want to be. Yeah. Or they're like, how can he possibly have got back in time to save the whales? Is that possible? doesn't matter. It's like, yeah, no, it's fiction. Obviously, we like to have a good time here. It's all love. Uh, but I like the the idea that, uh, you know, people have to be a little, you know, feed off each other's enthusiasm as opposed to tam- tamping it down. Indeed. It's important Indeed. for Star Indeed. Trek. Science. Science fiction. <sighs> and with that, shall we move on to next time? Let's. Next time on Set Phasers. Next time on Set Phasers, I'll be in uh, Texas, probably. I don't know. But we'll be talking about Season 2, Episode 7 of Set Phasers. And uh, who knows what will happen there. Maybe uh, the Earth will explode because of the Packwood bomb. Who can say? Anyway, if you're willing to do it, we're willing to do it. Uh, Thank you so much for checking out our program. If you like what you hear... You can hear other episodes of it or new episodes. It comes out every Monday wherever you get your podcasts. Oh, crap. I wasn't paying attention. Uh, yes, you can follow us on all of the things. Set Phasers and at Set Phasers Podcast. Um, hashtag me, I'm strong. And I'm, uh, I'm working on I'm working on that. Working, working hard on some hashtag meme games. Strong things. Working on some hashtag meme game strong things. And if you like what you what we're doing here, if you want to continue, to, if you want to support our continuing mission to discover what Star Trek has in store for us, and there's so much. There's Picard. There's uh, the rest of Lower Decks. There's Strange New Worlds. Who knows when that's coming out? There's season uh, four, season four of Discovery. Oh God, we need to go back and watch all of season three. Uh, then you can go to Patreon.com/slash Set Phasers. And join our Patreon, our patrons there, mm. our patrons, I, I, patrons. That, that's how you say the word. Mm-hmm. Uh, we have many cool levels, and uh, we do some cool things with our patrons, uh, including a monthly watch along of some Star Trek, which we'll need to set up for Set Tom. That's right. 
Yeah. Uh, yes, set that up. We will do so. We have a lot about what we want to watch. Packlid stuff. Do we do the packlids? Haven't done that yet. We could. I'm just in the mood to watch something weird. I'm kind of in the mood to watch Enterprise. I don't know if that's just a cool dumb. No, no, thing. I'm up for that. I'm game. I want to hear that theme song. I don't know why. We could take a break and listen to it right now if you want to. I don't think that's wise. <laughs> I have to keep my head in the game here. <laughs> okay. Well, until next time, I am Stevie Mans. And I am, uh, I forgot I'm the, oh, I'm a sad puddle that, yeah, that's right. Well, no, I like to come <laughs> oh, up with something oh, cool oh, from I the episode, you just but I forgot. haven't had your coffee yet. I am, who am I? Yes, and I am someone who's tired. Uh, and this has been Set Phasers, a highly illogical Star Trek podcast. Computer. End program. Hmm?